Hey there, this is Alex. I see what you're saying with the asset grids not lining up. So I was playing around and wanted to see if there's any way that we could. Also, just for my own sake, I just was curious if there's a, something we could figure out. And uh, there, are, there is, but with multiple binding converters is what I would say. And maybe um, this may not be the absolute best solution, but at least it's something. If you uh, don't want to use a asset flow that tends to have a single item in focus or a carousel or something. Um, this may be something to at least try. Um, it could get a little bit advanced if you're new to Intuiface, um, but anyways, here here we go. I have two different asset grids that are simply showing, I think, six or eight different um, pictures inside of them. And then uh, I'll also show you, uh, uh, we'll walk through just showing the flipboard. I might have called it a flip chart. If you look in your collections here, the flip chart is how you can actually view a single item at once. And it also has all the exact same pictures inside of it in the same format. Um, again, you would do this through Excel, as I mentioned. So this is not gonna be exactly uh, the same exact thing that you're looking to do, but I'm hoping at least illustrates a point so you can mimic this uh, when you do an Excel. Anyways, uh, let's run this and I'll show you kind of how I uh, set this up so that your asset grids can actually continue to line up. Um, you said they're going to be independent, so if you scroll one of them, we just kind of want them to snap into place. So if you move them up or down, they will make sure that they're always in line. Same with this one here. If I move it a little bit too far, it'll set itself back. And as you can see on the bottom, what I had done is I have set uh, the scroll offset. So I have a watcher that's always watching the exact pixel count of how far this item is, uh, this asset grid is scrolling. Then for this asset grid, I have a number converter that simply takes away all the decimal points. Essentially, it kind of rounds it. You see 5.84 goes to number six. So I'll show you how I did that. And then as I was testing it, for some reason, uh, I think the asset grid actually thinks that there is a zero item. So when it's sitting here, it technically thinks it's at zero. But really you have an item here, so you want this to be called asset number one. So what I had to do is make another item that watches this number and simply adds one so that it will scroll to the correct one. Otherwise I was having issues where you couldn't even get to the bottom because it always thought uh, the second to last uh, item was the bottom. <laughs> so these are the things you figure out while we're testing, but I think it seems to work okay. It looks just fine. Um, but I said, it's not, as I mentioned, it's not exactly super smooth, but I'll show you how I did it. We'll go back to the editing mode. The important thing to uh, note here is that when you set up your asset grid, you need to know what your item width and your item height is because the first item that I have watching, this item is just a text item that I added. I have it bound to the asset grid's scroll offset. What the asset grid scroll offset is the that pixel count. And then that is uh, how far the pixel has, or the items have drifted inside the asset grid. Then what I have is a converter on this same text item. If you click edit converter, all I have this as a math item where I said divide and then I'm dividing by 300 because that is how tall each item is. So no matter what, whenever I scroll, it's going to divide by 300 and give me somewhat of a whole number. So I kind of know where I am in terms of which item I'm on. And, uh, but the thing is, is that will give me a whole bunch of zeros and ones. And since you can only have one converter at a time, that's why I created this second text item. The second text item, as you can see, this, this one is named scroll offset divide two. And this one is called converted whole number two. And what this text item is, is bound to this item. So all of those big numbers, or the numbers at the de after the decimal point. This is simply meant to um, read the same thing, but then this converter is set as a number format. And when you set with the number format, all you have to do is type in uh, a couple of zeros. The main thing is that it will set this to whatever uh, a whole number is. 
So there's no more decimal points. It takes away the whole decimal. So that one looks at this, converts it to a whole number. The last item here looks at this number, which is now a whole number, and simply adds one. So I have this bound to this item, which is whole number two, and converted whole plus one, then has a converter attached to it that simply is a math item, add one. And that will make sure that we are setting the correct item in line. So after we have our converter set up, what you need to do is take your asset grid. And um, I had to play around with some of the settings here as well because um, some things didn't work out so well. The best thing that I could find is you have to make two different triggers when the asset grid is scrolled forward and when it is scrolled backward. And both of them will do the same thing. So when you click, uh, when the whenever this asset grid is scrolled forward, we are going to set the asset grid itself to scroll to, and this is where this, the asset grid actually does have a, a relative position of its index. Um, so we want to bind what it thinks is the index now to that last item because we want this index to be shown. So we will take this and our converted whole plus one should give us the true index for that asset grid. The same thing will happen when we move backward or forward. So anytime I scroll this, as soon as I'm done scrolling, it's gonna to look to this number and scroll to that index item for the asset grid. Okay, let's look at that once again. So then I have the, uh, before we get into that though, I'll show you the uh, a button. Now, when I mentioned you do this in Excel, you're gonna create a data template. So you actually have your, in your data template, you're gonna put your image that you have. You're gonna put a transparent button that sits over the top of it and group them together. And then you'll take this group and you'll set it to be inside the data feed of your Excel document. So this group that you created, that template, will be repeated across every item in your asset grid. And this button will be the same for every single one. Uh, it will be set once it's released to show the flip chart, again, which has the exact same data inside of it in the exact same order, is first going to show it. And then it's going to scroll to whatever the index is of that asset grid. So as long, it will basically match the asset grid to the flip chart. So when I play it, let's look at this again. We'll show you the, as I'm scrolling, I'm still scrolling. So nothing's happening yet. You can see the exact pixel with all of those decimal points at the bottom left. And then the one and the two right now, the one is the converted whole number, which is one less. And so we have the addition of two. So whenever I release, it's gonna to scroll to number two in the list. Now, if I scroll to around number three, boom, it goes to number three. Now pretend that this button is inside of here, which is how you would set up your data template. I press this and you saw that it showed the item and then it scrolled to another item. So if I, if I hide it again, remember this is what it looks like. If I scroll to this item, you'll see this one actually has some text in it. And now we are scrolling to that one. And that is should be a way for you to accomplish what you're looking for. Uh, best of luck to you. Sorry, this was a little bit of a long video. Take care.